With the new tech that comes packed into the DJI Avada 2, a lot of people are wondering, can I fly this aircraft without a spotter? And the answer is kind of no, but yeah. Allow me to explain the nuance. If you're flying with just your goggles covering your eyes, yeah, you definitely need a spotter. However, with the new live view sharing functionality, you can fly this aircraft visual line of sight and you can be your own spotter. All you need to do is hook up your phone to the USB-C port here and see the live view on your phone through the DJI Fly app. And I've tried it out and it's extremely responsive. What's also pretty cool is that one day I forgot the um, cable to hook up to the goggles and the goggles do have the ability to live share uh, through a Wi-Fi connection. The Wi-Fi streaming is not as smooth as if you were to put the cable in the goggles, but it was still very flyable and still very responsive. As of this date, I was only able to try visual line of sight with the Avada 2 with a motion controller because it has the benefit of just being in one hand and then I could just hold the cell phone in the other hand. Now what would be awesome is if there was some sort of an adapter where I can put this on the FPV controller and my phone up there and then I can have my two hands on the FPV controller. If someone knows of an adapter like this for the FPV controller 3, just let me know in the comments, I'll pick it up in a second. Okay, let's talk about this new feature that the Goggles 3 has, the real view picture in picture. Now this is the new feature that DJI implemented for the new Goggles 3 and it brings some augmented reality to the Goggles experience with the two front cameras on the Goggles 3. Now you can optionally enable picture in picture real view and so you will have a small screen showing what the drone sees and then the larger view of your surroundings. Well, not technically your surroundings, you, what's directly in front of you. Now it's a little bit interesting how DJI had marketed this. You can tell that they're really trying to excite people uh, and get their imaginations going. So if you look at their webpage description for the Goggles 3, it'll say real view picture in picture, safety in sight. Without removing your goggles, you can now conveniently see your surroundings to get enhanced flight safety. Now, if you go have a look through the manual for the DJI Avada 2, in the section that concerns this, it says, when using real view picture in picture, the flight live view is only used to show the status of the aircraft. Do not rely on this screen for flight. The Canadian aviation regulations define visual line of sight as follows. Unaided visual contact at all times, sufficient to be able to control the aircraft, know its location, and scan the airspace to detect and avoid other aircraft or objects. This regulation specifically states that it is an unaided sight. Okay, so you wouldn't even be able to use binoculars and qualify for visual line of sight. It has to be just your eyes, but they do give concession if you have corrective lenses on. Aside from even just the regulation, the view is very narrow and you can only see some what's directly in front of you. And then also the fact that the the picture in picture screen is very small and it is difficult to navigate your drone using just that screen. You will need a spotter when you have your goggles on and this will not cut it. Now the nature of the Avada 2 and the type of drone that it is, a Cinewhoop, is such that aircraft traffic shouldn't be the highest risk while flying. Normally a Cinewhoop is flown very low to the ground and quite slow. So the biggest risk is hitting objects or even people. However, the advantage of having the goggles and a very crisp video feed is that you can pick out objects from a, from a distance. And so really running into a person or their dog is kind of not a huge risk, but we still need to be very careful. Choose locations to fly where there's no people and also just be aware of your surroundings, especially if you have your goggles on. And by the way, that's what a spotter is going to be doing for you. Now, there are talks about Canadian drone regulation that might help with this whole situation. Some considerations that really look at this type of flying that's low to the ground and not really a risk to any manned aircraft in the area. And this is called sheltered operation. 
So an example of a sheltered operation would be somewhere near a building, perhaps 100 to 200 feet horizontally or even vertically from the building. And as long as you're within some reasonable range of any obstacles or maybe a building, then it's safe to assume that perhaps you don't need a spotter to constantly scan for aircraft where there's going to absolutely be no aircraft. So the relevant section from the Canada Gazette article states, Advanced pilot certificate holders can perform sheltered operations. A pilot may fly their drone around an obstruction without keeping the drone in direct line of sight, if they keep the drone within a certain distance to the obstacle. This would enable tasks such as building inspection or taking photos of a home for real estate. Now they don't mention FPV and FPV goggles explicitly, but I believe that that type of flying reasonably falls under this type of sheltered operation. What is a shelter? There's some sort of a conceptual ceiling under which you have some sort of safety. Safety from what? The risk of a manned aircraft, perhaps. And I believe it only makes sense that, that this could potentially pertain to FPV operations. Now, as far as I know, there's no timeline as to when this might come into effect for Canadian drone pilots. And as far as I know, it might not even happen. But it's definitely something we can all look forward to as safe, responsible pilots looking to advocate for more common sense drone regulations. If you found this video interesting, please hit that like button. And if you've seen a few of my videos, please consider subscribing. Thanks for hanging out. Take care.